Today we are going to talk about measuring current. Measuring current is another one of the fundamental things we do in electronics, but unlike measuring voltage, it's a little more tricky to do. In measuring voltage, remember we just take the two leads of the meter, stick them in two different places in the circuit, and the meter tells us the difference between those two voltages. To measure current, we have to be a little more intrusive to the circuit. Uh, more commonly is we have to actually break the circuit and make the meter part of the circuit. So for example, uh, if I have a circuit, here's the batteries powering that circuit. And here's a resistor representing my circuit. And I'm going to have some certain current flowing through there. How do I measure that current? Well, what we're going to have to do is actually break that circuit and make our meter part of the circuit. So here is our current meter digital or analog, and so now the current goes through the meter and is now able to measure that. So that's the complication of measuring current, is we have to go actually through the meter. Now a little trick I've done if you want to measure the total current is if it's something that's battery powered, somehow get the battery separated, take a little piece of paper or something to insulate them, and then you know break them apart and then put your meter there and then the current has to go through your uh, your meter so it doesn't matter where we break the circuit remember the rule about a series circuit the current is the same everywhere and the battery acts like a pump a lot of people forget that the battery acts like that and they think oh the current goes out this side comes in that side and they don't realize that the current goes all the way through yeah if you want to get technical it's not really doing that but for all intents and purposes and including measuring current it sure looks like it does so we might as well just pretend it does. So we uh, look at the battery as a pump circulating the current so it doesn't matter where I break the circuit I'm going to be able to measure that current. So that's a trick I've used is if I have two batteries, well, even if it's one battery just break the connection somewhere uh, but anywhere if it's two batteries it's just kind of easy to get to the middle break that apart and you can measure the current at that point. The way current meters work of course is if it's an analog meter I have my armature in there that is on a pivot and my current goes through the armature causing that to turn. And we know it takes a certain amount of current. This has a known resistance of whatever. We get a certain amount of current going through there. We get a certain amount of deflection. In the case of a digital meter, digital meters always measure voltage. So how do we extrapolate current out of that? Well, real easily. If we have a known resistance, let's say it's one ohm. Well, let's say I put my voltmeter across that and I read one volt. Well, what do we know? Ohm's law says that if I know my voltage, I divide into it. One goes into one, tells me I've got a current of one amp. So that immediately becomes a current reading. So I simply put my current through a known resistance and then measure the voltage. Known resistance, get the voltage, I can know my current. You simply by Ohm's law, the current simply has a way of uh, delivering the you know, being calibrated to give us the current based on Ohm's law. So it's a pretty simple, straightforward thing. Remember one thing we're measuring current. A lot of meters have a high current mode, usually labeled something like 10 amps, where this is basically a shorting bar. It's a short piece of metal. Might actually be a little metal rod, might be a circuit board trace, but most likely a metal rod. And that's going to be tapped somewhere. And it's a known resistance. So let's say we get 0.1 volt. With one amp, that means that's going to be a 0.1 tenth of an ohm. Uh, so it's going to be a very low resistance, probably lower than that, probably maybe a hundredth of an ohm or something like that. And we measure the voltage across there to get our current. And the thing to remember there is when you're using the high current uh, mode, a lot of meters have three inputs. One says common or COM, that's where the black lead goes. The other one says probably VA omega for volts, amps, amps, and ohms, that's where the red lead goes. But if we want, so something like 10 amps, we move the red lead over to there to read the high current. So remember, that is going across a direct piece of metal, so you've got a direct short when you have that in the high current mode. So after doing that, always remember to take that out and put it back into the VA omega so that you don't accidentally short something out completely. Now there is another type of meter called a current clamp 
And what it does is it takes advantage of the fact that we have a magnetic field, which I'm drawing by some parallel lines. Whenever you have current flowing in a wire, you get a magnetic field around it, and a current clamp clamps around the wire and measures that magnetic field. The least expensive ones only do alternating current, and so they can sense the uh, alternating magnetic field that sets up a current inside the current meter and that can measure that current. Now, it's also invasive because we are taking energy from the circuit. Well, even measuring voltage, you take some energy from the circuit, but uh, current meters are just a little more invasive, but it can measure that current. They do have DC meters that can measure a DC, uh, a stationary magnetic field. They do have DC current clamps that can measure the stationary magnetic field around uh, direct current, but those are a little more expensive than the AC only ones. But that's uh, one way you can measure current is with a current clamp without actually having to break the circuit. Typically your current clamps only work at higher currents though. So that's the basic idea of how we measure current. Once again, you have to break the circuit and that has to go through your meter. Your meter becomes part of the circuit. So that's measuring current. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.